I know I'll be attacked for saying this, but it's fine. It's the truth. Um, but the men who follow Roland Martin do not tend to be alpha males. They normally tend to be what is called beta males. And I'm not saying this as an insult, you know, but it is what it is. Back in the day, they call them hen pet. They don't wear the pants in their house. Those types of men or LGBTQ men, those are normally the men that follow Roland Martin. Um, Whenever you see an alpha male, a headstrong male, um, a male who stands on his shit on his show, Roland Martin attacks that man. So this is my observation. Y'all can get mad all y'all want. So when that video was released, it didn't surprise me. You know what I'm saying? If it comes out that it's not real, cool. But for now, until I see that it's not, I believe it because his behavior leads me to believe that's what he likes. And if he likes that, cool. You know, you grown. Do what you do. But I'm just saying, Roland Martin is very sassy. And alpha males do not follow Roland Martin. When I have men attacking me on behalf of the defense of Roland Martin, I mean, they, they don't be the most masculine men. That's all I'm saying. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Catacombs. So you heard the, uh, the clip in the beginning. Um... First of all, I actually agree with this woman. And um, if you look back at it, she's, she's actually really, she, she really, really is right. Um, I remember a clip where uh, Roland Martin had Umar Johnson on his show with uh, three other people, three other guests. Two were men and one was a woman. And both the men didn't really seem very uh, masculine or nothing like that. They just seemed, I wouldn't say they were gay, but I would say they were definitely a lot softer in comparison to Dr. Umar Johnson. And Roland Martin was right in the middle of it. And if you look at uh, Roland Martin's uh, show, and again, I don't watch his show like religiously like that, but I do watch it because there's, there's, there's clips that pop up on YouTube. You know, he definitely produces a lot of content. And he has a good team behind him as far as uh, getting his stuff out there. But uh, usually the people that I see on his show, um, people that are on his panels and sometimes his guests, um, they are a little bit effeminate. They're not they're not really they're not really aggressive men um, unless they're attacking another man. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They don't they, they don't they don't they don't seem to have that same type of energy when it comes to a woman who disagrees with them, but only when a man who disagrees with them and that you know that's 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 actually pretty wild. Pretty wild. Um but others in his in his uh who don't who, the people who do the same thing that Roman Roland does is people like Van Jones, you know, men like that have you know, to be crying on stage, crying in on a national television over politicians. And to me personally, man, I'm just I just don't understand that. You never see any Hispanic man do that. You never see any uh, white man or Asian man or Arab, but you don't see that. You see black American men who are soft on national television crying over politicians. And it's, it's absolutely insane. And I think it's ridiculous that that is now the representation when it comes to black mas masculinity. You know, there's people out there trying to redefine masculinity for the new era for 2024, going into 2025 and things like that. And it's like, this is what's supposed to be the masculine. It seems like when they talk like that, it's usually geared towards... <clears throat> Uh, black men, and I don't I don't appreciate that because black men we already got a bad rap. We already we're already dealing with the gender war when it comes to black women. Black women don't respect us as much as they should respect us. And when you have these type of representations of black men uh, on on a national stage, it's just, it's just not a good look. It's just making it's making the situation even worse. And I just don't appreciate that. But this woman is right. You know, when it comes to the Democratic Party, there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of uh, female energy, which isn't always uh, uh, wasn't absolutely it's not absolutely a bad thing. You do need to have the feminine energy, and the fe but it doesn't it can't be the entire thing. And the Democratic Party uh, panders to women a lot, uh, especially when it comes to black women. They call them the backbone of the Democratic Party, even though that in cities or other areas that are controlled by Democrats, black women are seem to be the most evicted out of their homes. <laughs> and the Democrats don't seem to be doing anything or putting in any policy that's going to remedy that. But yet the black woman is the backbone of the Democratic Party. She puts them in power and she gets nothing in return. <laughs> this is just this. You just can't write. You can't make this stuff. You can't make this shit up, man. But anyway, <clears throat> yes, I think she is right. There's definitely a lot of uh, uh, emasculated men. I mean, there was a there was a woman out there who said that uh, she thinks that the Democratic Party or the left or the left and just in general um, emasculates black men. And, and I believe they do that because they don't want to see us as a threat. Because if you have a strong, um, 
black man he can he can move mountains um a strong man period the will of a man is very very it's crazy uh but when it comes to black men it's very different you know we, we get things done when we actually focus and we're not distracted and not being told that we should be more effeminate and stuff like that you know it's just you know this is how it goes my observation but this whole uh, push for a masculinity when it comes to black uh, black men in, in a de- within the Democratic Party. You got people like like something. His last name's Porter. Something Porter. He wears dresses, things like that. They plaster him all over the place. They they plaster Van Jones crying. They plaster they plaster that other guy. I forget his name. He was crying too, and I think it was over uh, Kamala Harris, like a black woman. As he was crying too. He said, like, "I don't care if anybody you know makes fun of me if, if I'm crying." I'm like dog, come on, man. You don't see nobody else crying. Not even the women are crying, and you over here crying. Come on, you got to be kidding me. I think it's ridiculous, man. Um, but again, this woman is right, man. Um, we, 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 we it's, I, it's, it's hard for our women to respect black men if they are beta male or, 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 or just emasculated. Because being a beta male is not essentially a bad thing. It just, it's not, it's just, it means that you're not in control of the, the, the crowd or anything like that. That you're part of the crowd and you're underneath the alpha. But it doesn't necessarily make you less of a man, but being effeminate, being emasculated. Yeah. And I don't think that is the uh, the beta male trait. I don't think that being a beta male is you being emasculate or effeminate. I just think you just you're just not in control of the crowd like the alpha is. That's it. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's a whole different, you know, different groups of men, you know, alpha, beta, sigma. Um, sigmas are a different story. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just think that uh, this woman is right. And Roland, man, you got to you got to step it up. And, and and let's not forget, world, we we caught you. We saw we saw we saw that that clip of that uh, that uh, that uh, undressed man <laughs> on your uh, on your program. <laughs> oh man, yo, if you are into that, man, you might as well come out. Your, your audience might grow because of the climate that we're in. <laughs> so. Just, just, just say it, man. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Until the next one, y'all be easy. <laughs>